Hi, it's Beth from The Wine Road, and welcome to our virtual Wine and Food Affair 2020. We've put together a couple of videos that feature the winemakers and winery owners and chefs, and they're really talking about the wine that they featured this year and the recipe that they paired it with. So even though you can't be here, hopefully you'll really get to enjoy tasting along with them. So pour yourself a glass and enjoy the show. Thank you. Welcome to this year's virtual uh, Wine and Food Affair. My name is Anthony Beckman. I'm the longtime winemaker at Boleto Vineyards. And we have uh, an incredible 2018 Russian River Valley estate grown and estate bottled Pinot Noir that we're pairing with great uh, pork recipe from Ro our good friend Chef Roger at Lagar Restaurant. What I love about this wine is truly it is Pinot Noir. It's Pinot Noir from the top to the bottom and everything in between. It's fresh, it's bright, and yet it has an incredible texture, weight, and acidity that just pull it through. And with that kind of Pinot Noir, it pairs incredibly well with pork. So when Roger and I sat down to figure out what we we're gonna do, it's like, okay, Roger, just whip up your favorite pork and let's make it pair perfectly. The exact recipe is on the website, uh, www.bolettovineyards.com, two L's and two T's in Boletto. And this wine, like I said before, is estate grown and estate bottled. And what that really does for Boleto Vineyards is it allows us to perfectly farm. We control this, everything in this bottle from planting 10 years ago, to pruning, to farming, to harvesting, to making the wine in the vineyard and in the winery. And when you do that, you get what I consider to be distinct, delicious, really, truly Russian River Valley estate grown Pinot Noir, which does not happen very often. So for me, this wine is an embodiment of everything in Sonoma County, an embodiment of Russian River Valley, and even more so, a family run, small time grower who's really expanded and part of the community. And it's just a pleasure to work with both John and Terry Boletto. And I hope you enjoy the wine and it should pair perfectly with the with recipe online. Thank you very much. Good morning, I'm Jack Salerno with Manzanita Creek Winery. I'm the winemaker there and I've got this beautiful 2016 Zinfandel from the famed Rockpile AVA. This is a magnificent wine. It's a big, bold flavor. Zinfandels are my favorite. We're basically a Zinfandel house. We produce mostly Zinfandel. I've paired this Zinfandel with Chile Colorado, not to be confused with Chile con carne or Chile and beans. This is the purest form of Chile in my opinion, and Zinfandel is the perfect wine to pair with this type of dish. Um, Chile Colorado is all about depth of flavor and color. That's what Zinfandel is. This particular Zinfandel is bold. It's uh, sourced from a vineyard up above Lake Sonoma that's about uh, 1,400 feet above sea level, and this particular vineyard doesn't have any water source of any kind, so the owner of the vineyard, Chris Moritzen, has to drive water trucks up there, all harvest long and fill a cistern to water his vineyard. And it produces a grape that has a little bit heavier skin than Zinfandel's grown in the valley, so it has more uh, color and flavor, spicy characteristics. Uh, it's a big wine, it's got a lot of alcohol. It got 98 points at the California State Fair. Uh, can't say enough about it, it really is a magnificent bottle. So the key thing about making chili is to use obviously good ingredients, fresh ingredients, and I prefer to buy smaller quantities. I use a lot of chili, so that's why I have so much on hand, but the idea is that the chili loses its potency like any spice, garlic, oregano, et cetera, et cetera, the longer it sits around. So. Smaller containers like this may be better if you don't cook chili very often. And chili is kind of a workhorse in my kitchen. We use it for all kinds of different things. We use it in place of, of uh, just straight paprika and stuff like that. Uh, chili, typically chili powder is kind of like curry in the sense that it's a blend of spices. It's not just chili peppers, which in most cases are ancho chili peppers that are ground, mixed with garlic powder, salt, some include oregano, some include cumin. It just depends on where you buy it. I like to buy my spices from myspicer.com. This is fantastic stuff. It's always fresh, good prices, etc. So in the recipe, you'll see that there's quite a bit of ingredients when it comes to the spice part, almost two cups for four pounds of meat. And don't be afraid of that because that's what really makes this depth of flavor happen. And when you uh, take your beef and cut it into cubes, one and a half inch cubes, I like to use chuck, it's the best cut. Um, 
and you put it into a paper bag and shake it with flour. When you're browning the beef, you do it in two batches. You don't want to overcrowd it. You take the meat out, set it aside on a platter, and then you add in your onions and start to saute the onions a little bit till they just start to brown. Then you dump all the spices that are mixed together, by the way. You got to mix the spices in a bowl and then dump it all at once into the pan. And you want the spices to cook and volatize. That's very important that they volatize until you really smell the spices opening up in front of you. Then you deglaze with a little bit of Zinfandel, glug, glug, glug. And uh, what that does is alcohol is a solvent, so it extracts flavors out of the chili that the water won't extract when you add the boiling water, etc. Add all the meat back into the pan, and you add your boiling water and your chicken stock and let it simmer for a period of time and then put it into the oven at 225 and let it sit. You don't want to overcook the meat. You don't want the meat to shred. You want it to be whole, but you want it to be tender. So when you test it, you want to test it with a uh, probe like a fork or something. You don't want much, much resistance, almost like sticking a cube of butter. So it has to be nice and tender, but you don't want it to fall apart. That's important. And you can serve it with just about anything you want. Um, a lot of folks just like tortillas. This chili Colorado works very well in tamales. And um, the tamales I'm speaking of are my grandfather's recipe that are literally a uh, famous recipe from the 1920s and uh, the company that makes those tamales to this day and sells them in the uh, frozen food sections of markets is Garibaldi and Golden West tamales. That's where this recipe comes from. So these aren't like a regular Mexican tamale. These are a good 14 ounce tamale and it's tied at each end instead of folded and so it works great for tamales. It works great just straight. You can do it over rice any way you like it really. This again is a magnificent Zin that pairs really well. So, you know, Zinfandels do quite well with spicy foods more so than say a Cabernet or a Pinot Noir because Zinfandel, I like to compare Zinfandel and put it in the context of music. Cabernet and Pinot Noir are like listening to Yo-Yo Ma play the cello, beautiful. But Zinfandel is like listening to Miles Davis play his horn with jazz. Zinfandel has a lot more a lot more going on, really. It really, really does. After the 1st of November, we will be having a sale on a particular Zinfandel. It's $120 a case. It's a Sonoma County Zinfandel, and we call it Cloudbuster. And that is for Oregon, Washington, Nevada, and California only. And uh, we will be selling that at $120 a case. It's ready to release in early November. It's a fantastic bottle of wine for everyday consumption, and you'll be quite surprised. Hello, my name is Rick Hutchinson, owner and winemaker of Amphora Winery in Dry Creek Valley. We are honored to be a part of the annual food and wine affair along the wine road. This year's pairing for us is our 2019 Vermentino Russian River Valley. It's paired with a traditional, really wonderful recipe and quick recipe uh, that's a tradition with us at the winery. The day after Thanksgiving, we get Tamales Bay oysters, barbecued and raw, and we make about 20 gallons of clam chowder, the recipe that you'll be getting, and we serve it with our Vermentino. Love the Vermentino. Um, it's got a really wonderful uh, peach, citrusy, and really nice acid character to it that cuts through the, uh, the soup. There's bacon in the soup, and it's a uh, uh, wonderful, wonderful pairing. Uh, to give you a nice offer for, um, uh, for the event, for the weekend, we are offering 5% on three bottles and $5 shipping. www.amphorawines.com or you can call the winery at 707-431-7767. We will look forward to seeing you sometime soon. My name is Rick Hutchinson and I approve this message. Welcome everyone to Wine and Food Affair Weekend. My name's Robert. I'm the Director of Sales and Marketing with Amista Vineyards and... Hi, I'm Ashley Herzberg. I'm the winemaker at Amista. And today we're actually bringing you our 2017 Trace. Um, Trace is our GSM blend, Grenache, Syrah, and Mavedra, that we grow right on our estate property, right next to the creek in Dry Creek. And we're gonna do a little tasting of it and then hopefully get to try some of this delicious food too. 
What we've paired with it is our good friend Ken Rocchioli has created a wild mushroom ragu on a creamy polenta. Can't tell you how much butter and cream there is in the polenta, but it's delicious. You get a lot of those earthy notes that pair beautifully with a GSM blend. So Grenache, Syrah and Mavedra are a classic combination and they each bring a different element to this blend and to the, to the food pairing. Um, Grenache lends a sort of orange zest character, the Mavedra adds a bright cherry note and the Syrah sort of pulls it all together with some earth tones and some deep robust flavors. So should we try? I am dying to try this. I'll try the wine first. Uh, I'm going to try the food mm. first. Yeah, so the wine is beautiful. Let's mm. see how this goes. Mm. It's a delicious pairing. Some of the fruit flavors in the wine sort of make all the mushrooms pop and oh, that wow. earth tone just balances Amazing. everything out. And the butter in the polenta is pretty delicious. <laughs> <laughs> so this weekend, visit our website at amistavineyards.com and any order of six bottles or more, it's complimentary shipping. So take advantage of it this weekend only. We look forward to seeing you guys at the winery soon. Cheers. Cheers. Hi, I'm Dutsi Nachbauer, and my husband Bill and I own Acorn Winery and Alegria Vineyard. He's very sorry he's not here, but he's off doing his civic duty on a jury for Sonoma County. We bought our 32 acres in 1990, and we bought it because of the eight and a half acres of field blend Zinfandel that were first planted in 1890. It makes the wine our heritage vine Zinfandel that I'm going to be chatting about today. The vineyard name is Alegria, which means happiness and joy in Spanish. And we named it that because the property was part of one of the early large Mexican land grants in California. So Spanish was spoken on the property prior to America taking it on. So Alegria, I'm pouring our 2016 Heritage Vines Infantile. It has 18 different kinds of grapes in it. All of Acorn's wines are field blends. And the picture there shows you what a field blend looks like in a picking bin. Multiple kinds of grapes are picked, crushed, and co-fermented. The idea is if they're co-fermented, it's making a more diverse, complex wine. And it reflects our passion for America and diversity, multicultural, multi-grapes. So, Alegria. So we chose for our food pairing, honoring that past, a chicken mole, and we buy our mole sauce from a local place in Healdsburg, and it is here. I'm not sure where you all are, but I'm quite sure that you can find mole in the Hispanic food sections of your market. It is a very complex, multi-ingredient sauce that is wonderful with chicken, rice, vegetables, but again, it reflects our passion for multiple kinds of grapes, field blends, delicious wine to enjoy with family and friends. We're very small. We make fewer than 2,000 cases a year. Generally, our sales are winery direct. Few wholesale outlets or re restaurants in Healdsburg and in the marketplace and a couple of places on the East Coast. But we love to share our wines with our friends and people who get to know us. So we hope you'll discover Acorn Wines as a result of this. Speaking back of our Zinfandel, unlike many, it's got 13% of a grape called Alicante Boucher, red flesh, thick skin, and it really changes the nature of the wine to give it more tannin, a little more structure, and a little less of the sweetness that sometimes is typical in Zinfandels. We're in Russian River Valley, um, cool, cool nights, lots of fog, although less fog than there used to be, but very diverse microclimate. And we're about three quarters of a mile from the river on a level with the river. So we're very impacted by the fog. Thank you. We hope you enjoy our wine and explore chicken mole with a, as an every night dinner. Thank you. Alegria. Hi, I'm Matt Michael. I'm with Baldessari Family Wines. It's a small family owned business from Sonoma County and my father and I started it in 2003. So we've been doing it for 17 years now. And most recently, right before the pandemic, we opened a tasting lounge in downtown Windsor. 
So for those of you who don't know the brand, um, we make a few varietals. We make what we're pouring today, a Sonoma Coast Chardonnay from the Carneros area. We also make a Russian River Valley Pinot Noir, as well as a Rosé of Pinot Noir, also from Russian River Valley. We make a Syrah from Bennett Valley and a Malbec from Alexander Valley. So all of, this, all of the case quantity is small production, and it's mainly focused on showing the expression of each viticulture area and what Sonoma County has to offer. Um, we really find that there's some beautiful areas in Sonoma County, including where we get our Sonoma Coast Chardonnay from. So today, we'll be focusing on the Sonoma Coast Chardonnay and our par pairing, which is a pan-seared halibut. Um, the Sonoma Coast Chardonnay is from the San Giacomo Vineyard in Carneros. And it's the old Kaiser Vineyard, so it's a Wente clone, which is esteemed by many winemakers. And part of the reason why we love this site is because of the coolness where it grows. So we get a great concentration in the berry, and it really, it really transfers to the wine beautifully. The goal with this wine is not to have a lot of oak on it, so we're not really going for that really rich, buttery, tropical Chardonnay. What we want is pureness of fruit. So think about um, lychee, think about uh, lemon curd, think about lemon oil, think about honeysuckle flowers, think about all of these really enticing aromas that don't have to do with oak. And then we have a really refined acidity to it, but it's not too much. Sometimes acidity get too much where it kind of overpowers the wine. So everything's in balance and we just have a little kiss of oak that brings a little vanilla bean to it, but not a lot. So really what we're focusing on here is the fruit. So what you'll see is a great depth, a great food pairing wine. And that's what we wanted to do with this wine. We really wanted to show you how well this wine pairs with food. I personally like to just pair it with a glass myself, but some people pair it with, with uh, food as well. Um, so we chose a pan seared halibut and it's got a little Romanesco in there. It's got a little bit of radicchio and a walnut uh, base to it. And then a little bit of uh, lemon breadcrumbs as well. And so the radicchio brings out a little bit of the bitterness, but when you roast it, that kind of goes to the background. And then the Romanesco has a little nutty flavor to it. And the walnuts, of course, have that great texture. And so the lemon curd breadcrumb, breadcrumbs really tie all that together. And the, it really pairs beautifully with the halibut. So what you get is this streamlined approach to the whole dish. So unfortunately with the pandemic right now, we can only host at our tasting lounge outside, but we'd love to see you. We'd love to pour this wine for you in person and tell you a little bit more about it and about ourselves and the business. In the meantime, we hope you enjoy this wine with the food dish that we've laid out. The recipes will be available. And if you're so inclined, visit our website, www.bfwwine, so there's two W's in there, bfwwine.com and put in the code MATT, M-A-T-T, and you'll get 20% off any order you place across the board. So it's our way of saying thank you to all of you who have supported us, and we hope it gets a few new customers in to try the wines such as our Sonoma Coast Chardonnay here. Hi, my name's Mike Officer. My wife, Kendall, and I are owners of Carlisle Winery in the beautiful Russian River Valley. Our specialty is the production of wine from Old Vine Historic Vineyards. With that in mind, we decided to feature our 2018 Russian River Valley Papera Ranch Zinfandel. Planted in 1934 by Celestino Papera, this is one of the great old vine vineyards of California. But there's a couple other reasons why we wanted to feature this wine. One, I think when most wine consumers consider Russian River Valley, they naturally think Pinot Noir or Chardonnay. But what many probably don't know is that the Russian River Valley is home to many, many wonderful old vine vineyards, especially in the Santa Rosa Plain neighborhood just on the east side of the Laguna de Santa Rosa. And that's where this vineyard is indeed located. The other reason we wanted to show this wine is because Zinfandel, when made with minimal oak and an eye towards balance, can be incredibly food friendly. And as you can see with this recipe, we, we've paired it with a rich salmon in a wild mushroom sauce. Most people would gravitate if they were going to go red, they would probably lean towards Pinot Noir, but this Zinfandel is a beautiful accompaniment to this dish. The wine's acidity provides the perfect foil to the dish's richness in both the fish and the mushrooms. Also, it has this incredible bright Zinberry fruit, 
What's Zinberry? To me, that's kind of a mythological cross of a, of a cherry and a raspberry and a blood orange. And that fruit really provides a nice complement to the earthiness of the mushrooms. So with that in mind, I hope you enjoy the wine. I hope you enjoy the recipe Kindle has provided. And if you have any questions or want additional information about this wine or any of our other wines that we produce, feel free to visit our website at carlislewinery.com. Thank you. Howdy, uh, my name is Duff. I am the estate guru at Cast Wines, uh, located at 8500 Dry Creek Road in beautiful Sonoma. Um, Cast Wines was founded back in 2012 on a very simple principle, and that was if you have uh, good wine and good friends, you can really create fantastic experiences. And so when you visit Cast, uh, this is the wine you will be greeted with. Uh, this is our sparkling Blanc de Noir. Uh, Blanc de Noir is um, it's white wine from red grapes, is what that means. Um, this wine is made in the traditional style of Champagne, so method Champenois. Um, so the fermentation, the secondary fermentation occurs within the bottle. Um, it is also made from the three traditional um, varietals in Champagne. So we have uh, Pinot Noir, Pinot Meunier, and Chardonnay. Uh, the Pinot Meunier is really going to add um, a little bit of that backbone and sort of that structure to the wine. Uh, the Pinot Noir um, is really the expressive varietal of the, fr of the three that um, almost gives you like a sense of place almost helps you understand maybe where these grapes were grown. And then the Chardonnay rounds it all out um, uh, with a little bit of that fruit and that sort of that creamy mouthfeel. Um, uh, when it all comes together, you have this beautiful, pretty um, versatile wine. Um, because of that, I, I frequently find myself encouraging people to enjoy this uh, for breakfast, lunch, dinner, with or without wine, I'm sorry, with or without food. Um, and uh, you know, it pairs really well with um, like a spicy food, um, Thai food, sushi, um, but I really think it shines when you have um, a dish that has sort of a lot of unique components um, that you want to kind of all pull together. Um, and so our recipe is um, a buttermilk fried chicken and is over a um, savory pumpkin sage waffle with a brown butter maple syrup. Um, this incredible recipe was actually created by my very talented and beautiful wife, Lisa, um, who is also the creative mind behind Spirited Bite. Um, you can find um, an ever-growing sort of catalog of her recipes on our website, uh, www.castwines.com. Um, all of the recipes on there are tried and tested with cast wines. Um, if you find yourself looking for a little more culinary inspiration, please check out spiritedbite.com uh, as well. Um, and, you know, really, um, we are currently open seven days a week, so uh, we encourage people to uh, please pay us a visit, uh, give us an opportunity to crack open a bottle of wine with you, um, and um, say hi and see what we're all about. So pop that open. Cheers. So really what we're looking for here is, um, you know, you get a little bit of that uh, yeasty component that you like to get on a champagne. Um, I get a bit of fruit um, on the palate. Just what I want. I mean, it's dry, subtle, subtle, almost apple, citrusy components. Um, it really makes it, I mean, I hope that everybody who's watching this really makes this recipe because it is outstanding and they, they really are very harmonious together. Welcome to Wine and Food Affair 2020. Uh, I'm Joe Fapoli, one of the partners at Christopher Creek Winery in Healdsburg and chief wine drinker. And uh, this is my good friend and our winemaker. Mike Brunson. So uh, today we're enjoying the 2016 uh, Dry Creek Valley Meritage. It's one of the, the original flagships of Christopher Creek Winery. It's uh, up on about a thousand feet up on Bradford Mountain in West Dry Creek Valley. Mike, do you want to talk Indeed. a little bit about the vineyard and sure the wine itself? Yeah, yeah. We got uh, all five varietals of, uh, we've got Malbec, Petit Verdot, a little bit of Cabernet Franc, Merlot, Cabernet Sauvignon in the, uh, in the blend. Like Joe mentioned, Bradford Mountain, a little brambly on the, on the nose. Beautiful wine. Uh, 
One of the reasons we use all five varietals is because it gives us a little leeway to adjust it as necessary, fine tune it as necessary to make the blend that we're, that we're after, that we're after. Um, we do a taste-based winemaking, we say this all the time, but it really is uh, fine tuning by, by half a percent, one percent. It's a really difficult and tedious process when we have all the, uh, the barrel samples out on our table in, in the barrel room and we have to taste through them all in different combinations. It's a sacrifice of the world to make for everyone's benefit. Yes. We selected this wine specifically for the, the recipe and vice versa. Uh, it's uh, braised short ribs in a slow cooker. It's, a, it's an old recipe, old family recipe that I've had in the, uh, for years and years and it's standby. Um, and it pairs really, really well with this wine. Uh, the, the fattiness, the full bodiness of the ribs with the full bodiness of this wine, actually it's a really good pairing. We're really happy with it. Comfort food for your, uh, your autumn dinner table exactly. to go with the comfortable wine. Exactly. This wine's not bad at 10.30 in the morning either though. <laughs> This is true. Once again, I'm Joe Fapoli. I'm Mike Brunson. We'd love to have you come and visit us at Christopher Creek Winery in Healdsburg. Check us out on the World Wide Web, ChristopherCreekWinery.com. All kinds of social media, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. Telephone. <laughs> Give us a call. Let us know you're coming. We'll treat you special on the deck. It's a, it's a good scene. Cheers. Hi there, I'm Craig Colagrossi with Colagrossi Wines, here with a friend, winemaker, and chef, Fabiano Romacci. But today I'm a chef winemaker. We are here to share with you our pairing that we've designed for Wine and Food Affair this year. My 2019 Sauvignon Blanc from Dry Creek Valley, and Fabiano will be serving us. Today we're going to prepare the Bucatini alla Matrechana that dates back to the 18th century. What an amazing dish. We're going to go to Rome here. So we're here capturing the essence of Sonoma County. And now we're going to take a nice little journey to prepare this lovely dish that consists of Bucatini. In Italian, bocca, or buco means, means a hole. And so this spaghetti has a little hollow note in, in the center. And the sauce is going to consist of the pork jowl that's cured and smoked and paired with some caramelized onions and a little bit of garlic, a little pecorino romano, fresh parsley, tomato sauce, and we're going to bring the essence of the summertime here in Sonoma. And we thought the Sauvignon Blanc would be a great pairing for this dish. It's a, a Sauvignon Blanc that's a little heartier, more body than um, you'll find in most, um, and has a nice ribbon of citrus through the whole wine from entry to finish but doesn't have uh, the rough edges of a super bright uh, Sauvignon Blanc. So it should pair well with the spices and the, uh, the nice richness you're gonna get from the meat. Cheers to you. Perfect compliment. Thank you, thank you. So with this Sauvignon Blanc coming from the valley of Dry Creek Valley, it's a sandy loam, great place to grow Sauvignon Blanc. It's, uh, we let it get a little riper there, so it's gonna be a little more rich in body and a um, little more flavorful Again, from front to back, you're gonna get some stone fruit, almost like a ripe kiwi, some nectarine, and uh, again, a ribbon of citrus throughout the wine. Well, I was just gonna mention that the crisp acidity of the wine is gonna go beautifully with this wonderful dish here because we got the, the, um, the, the this lovely tomato sauce that I made when you get the little smokiness from the uh, pancetta itself and the caramelized onions bring a nice, nice little sweetness to the dish. And then you finish it off with the pecorino romano, which is not made from milk, uh, from cow's milk, it's made from sheep milk. And so then you combine that with some fresh parsley, you finish it off some extra virgin olive oil, a little pepperoncino to give it a little bit of a spice. And then you got the nice palate cleanser that comes in to just bring the whole thing together. Sounds great, I'm hungry. Let's start cooking, shall we? I'm known for my Italian varietals, uh, Sangiovese, Barbera, Dolcetto, some Segrantino. Um, but this year I thought the Sauvignon Blanc would be a great fit for this. Kind of change it up a little bit. So just to get started with this lovely dish, we're going to set, uh, we're going to pour a little bit of olive oil in the pan. A little bit because you got the pork itself that's going to render its own fat. So we get that going. Get a nice little sizzle going. And then we got the caramelized onions with a little bit of garlic. So this is a really simple dish, but to get the simplicity at its best, really. If you can smell it as we're going on here. So we got the pancetta going with the caramelized onions, garlic, and then we're gonna add a little bit of this uh, lovely Sauvignon Blanc to this dish. A little, a little splash. 
Be careful when you pour the uh, wine into the pan when you got the heat going on because it's going to come back at you. And then what we're going to do is we're going to combine the late harvest tomato sauce that I made. Now for the bucatini, I recommend that if the package says 8 to 12 minutes, I usually take it at about, about 6 or 7 minutes into the boiling process. The reason so is I would love to finish the pasta into the sauce. The pasta itself will absorb the lovely flavor from the sauce and which gives it a nice pronounced outcome. So I get the bucatini. Give it a little stir, a little toss. Can everybody smell it? There you go. So once you get this composition going, I would say at least two minutes, then I would add a little bit of the pecorino cheese to incorporate and bring the flavor together. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is, has, I like a little bit of spice to it, so I'm gonna add just a little pepperoncino made from these Calabrian peppers that I grew this summer in my backyard, which they're located right here. They're drying on their little branch. So that gives it a little extra taste here. And then you simply just swirl this bucatini that's picked up all that nice flavor. Present it in the plate. Make sure that you leave some remaining sauce to go up on top. All right, so then we're going to finish it off with the Pecorino Romano. The town where this dish originates from, it's up in the mountains, so they deal with a lot of sheep. So that's why the Pecorino comes in, but this could be also substituted with Parmigiano Reggiano if you wish. I'm going to finish it off with a little parsley. And last but not least, I'm going to drizzle a little olive oil back onto this dish here, just to accent it a little and just give it a nice little clean here. Smells great. And it can be a 20 minute pasta made any day of the week. All right, so thanks for joining us today. If you go to my website at colagristiwines.com or give me a call at 707-529-5459 and say the magic words, wine and food affair, we will extend a 50% discount on cases of Sauvignon Blanc for the next two weeks. Salute. E buon appetito. Hi, my name is Timothy Bodell. I'm with Francis Ford Coppola Winery. Today, I'm showcasing this beautiful wine. This is our 2018 Francis Ford Coppola Winery Director's Cut Cinema. This is uh, one of my favorite bottles of wine that we make. It is 52% uh, Zinfandel, 37% Cabernet, and 11% Cab Franc. We source our grapes, uh, the 52% uh, Zinfandel from the uh, Dry Creek Valley. Our Cabernet comes from the Alexander Valley. And when you first look at this bottle of wine, it's an absolutely beautiful label. This is what's called a zoetrope. It's a uh, early movie making device that's uh, a replica um, from Mr. Coppola's collection. So if we can uh, open this bottle of wine up, the aromas that we'll get is this wonderful nose of baking spices and currants. Um, this, this wine is aged in oak for 13 months. You'll notice a beautiful color. Just like that. Wonderful aromas. And as we taste it, there's really delicious uh, notes of plum and uh, vanilla. And it's really just a beautiful, well-rounded wine. Now, the dish that I created to go perfectly with that wine is, is a celebration of things fall here in Sonoma County. And those ingredients are duck breast, winter vegetables, the last of the season figs, wild mushrooms. Uh, so the, the recipe is pan roasted duck breast with winter vegetables and wild mushrooms. Now the key to making a terrific duck breast dish is to lightly score the skin and the fat of the duck breast and cook that duck in a pan skin side down for about 80 to 90% of the cooking uh, time. 
similar as you would cook a piece of salmon. Um, this, this recipe is full of flavor um, that you get from the roasting these beautiful winter vegetables that we source from our culinary garden at the winery. And these wild mushrooms, we use some of our own estate olive oil. And this, this recipe pairs really beautifully with this cinema. Come check us out at the winery. Our tasting room is open from 12 to 4. And come see me at the restaurant uh, seven days a week from 12 to 7. And come have a great meal on our patio. We'll see you there. Hi, I'm Katie Wetzel Murphy from Alexander Valley Vineyards. I'm a family partner, owner, winery ambassador. We're so pleased to be participating in the Wine Roads Wine and Food Affair. This year, it's always one of my favorite events, even if it's, even if it's virtual. So the wine we've chosen to pair with this event is our 2014 Cyrus. Cyrus is our um, proprietary Bordeaux blend, which we started producing in 1995. Cyrus is named after Cyrus Alexander, who settled the Alexander Valley in the 1840s. And our property is located on his original homestead, where he and his family lived until my parents bought the property in 1962. So we have a lot of historic background for the name Alexander Valley Vineyards and the name Cyrus as well. I'll open this in a sec <coughs> before I forget. For lots of information and this recipe and more recipes, visit our website at avvwine.com. There's lots of information there and specials almost every week that you can take advantage of. So while I'm opening this wine, I'm gonna ask my friend Douglas Keane to talk about the recipe that he chose to go with this vintage of Cyrus and why he chose it. Hi, I'm Douglas, and I'm with Cyrus Restaurant. I've also been in Alexander Valley for about uh, 18 years now, and it's truly one of the most beautiful places to live and cook. Um, you know, it was, it's, it's, it's a treat to be able to pair with a wine like this. First of all, it's a big wine, but it's a very finessed wine, and that's really important for when you're trying to do a perfect pairing. Um, and so I think that the, 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 the cool thing about it is there's great um, fruit from it, but also there's still acid. And if, if, when you cook with wines without any acid on it, it becomes really hard to pair. But when you get a wine with some decent acid on it, like this one, it actually allows you to do different things. And so that's why we picked the duck, because it's got a ton amount of umami, as well as a good amount of fat with the skin. And then we have the red wine cabbage that goes with it, that p perks it up just a little bit. But no, in, another type of wine would actually be destroyed by that red wine cabbage. But this is what worked absolutely perfectly. And then we were able to toast some chestnuts off and uh, bring it all together. It's a um, not only, I mean, and sometimes you get a little caught up in the perfect pairing. Um, we had the chance to work with this wine and tweak the recipe to make it. I think sometimes the pairing is just about having great food and great wine. So I think we hit both notes on this recipe and pairing. Cyrus, as I said, is a Bordeaux blend. And on the back, you can see the blend, all five varieties of the wine. It's aged for about 24 to 28 months in French oak barrels and then bottle aged it about a year and a half before it's released. So it does have a beautiful balance. Yeah. We're looking for the balance of tannin, oak, fruit, acid, and alcohol. And this, all, this wine also ages beautifully for a long time. One of the great things about the recipe, I think, is that you can do it ahead of time. And so you don't have to worry about cooking everything perfectly. You can just basically focus on rewarming the duck breast. The cabbage can be done ahead of time. The, uh, the, the chestnuts can be done ahead of time. The, the duck can be rendered down and rested perfectly. And then you just warm everything up. And so I think it's more important just to kind of enjoy the time with your friends and family than it is to spend cooking right in front of them. So thank you for participating in Wine and Food Affair this year. I, I hope you enjoy it. We have some great wine and food pairings. The Wine Road has so many outstanding wineries that are participating and I appreciate you participating with us as well. My pleasure. Come back and visit us soon. Hi, my name is Lise Asimont and I'm the viticulturist, winemaker and co-founder of Dot Wines. Dot Wine is a small family project and we specialize in Russian River Valley Pinot Noir. Today I'm presenting to you our 2018 Lyric Vineyard Pinot Noir. It's actually grown right in this area. It's actually right a bit of a ways right behind me and off to the north, just a touch. It's on the Wachika Soil Series. And we chose this wine today because it's one of our wines, and especially because it is a Pinot Noir, it pairs so well with so many different types of cuisine and food. 
So what I love about the Santa Rosa Basin Pinot Noirs is that they always kind of lead with this really fruity, tooty, cherry berry kind of quality. And when you smell it in the glass, it just pops right out. I always feel like Pinot Noirs grown in the Santa Rosa Basin or Santa Rosa Plain tend to be a little friendlier. Um, not that unfriendly Pinot Noirs aren't sexy and fun too, like our Lolita, uh, but the Lyric is just kind of a good, a good time with regards to all of its fruit load up front. We made this wine uh, with a lot of acidity. We like a lot of acidity to cut through the cuisine that we like to serve with it. So um, as we pour a glass of the Dot Wine 2018 Lyric Pinot Noir, you'll notice the color. It's a, it's a pretty color. It's kind of what I call a moderate colored uh, Pinot Noir. With Pinot Noir and Pinot Noir winemaking, we're not too terribly concerned about making a very dark wine. I'm going to leave that to my Cabernet Sauvignon and Petite Syrah Bacon brothers and sisters. Um, and as we smell this, just really pretty cherry berries, really pretty light oak on it. Um, we worked with a new producer this year, a new cooper um, out of uh, France called a, a Barrels that we really love and we felt it really highlighted the aromatics of this wine. And structure wise, this wine has a very light tannin signature, big, bright, pretty acidity and it really sings with all sorts of cuisine. I happen to be a Filipino American and in our home, we cook a lot of Filipino cuisine. So I recommended and we actually submitted a recipe for pork kare kare. And that's actually a very exotic dish. And the reason why we presented this recipe is to prove how versatile Pinot Noir can be. Uh, pork kare kare is actually a very rich dish. Um, it's certainly not something you're gonna do on a diet. Um, and it contains um, a little bit of shrimp paste and quite a bit of um, peanut butter, which it sounds kind of interesting. And I really want people to try this because it's a very exotic dish, but it's actually quite warming. It's rich, it's perfect for the fall time. And it goes so well with Pinot Noir. Um, well, hope you enjoy that. Hope you try this dish. It's actually easy to make at home. Hope you can enjoy pairing that with the Dot Wines 2018 Lyric Pinot Noir. If you'd ever like to visit us, check us out on our website, www.dotwinery.com. We're also one of the new wineries being featured at Locals Tasting Room in Geyserville, so you can go by appointment only and check us out and taste us there. And this weekend, we'd like to offer all of the participants and, and viewers of this amazing food affair um, a 15% discount from our online store. So check out dotwinery.com and use the discount code WINEROAD, W-I-N-E, R-O-A-D, no space, all caps, and enjoy your 15%. So cheers and drink Dot. Hello, my name is Julius. I represent Ectimo Winery. Welcome to the first and hopefully last wine and food affair. If you're watching this, you've taken the first and very important step of discovering Ectimo wines. I'm here today to introduce you to our 2017 Russian River Estate Pinot Noir. It comes from our own vineyard nestled in the Green Valley of Russian River. We harvest our own grapes, bottle our own wines on property and we hope you enjoy it as much as we do. So as an introduction, it comes out with a beautiful garnet color. On the aroma, you get hints of dark cherry, little blueberry, maybe even a hint of rose petal. On the palate, that beautiful, vibrant Bing cherry comes through. You get touches of wild strawberry, hints of red currant. It has a beautifully soft, silky tannin. The flavor just lingers. It makes your mouth water, makes you want more. I've chosen to pair this with a wild mushroom crostini. The wild mushrooms have a wonderful savory character that when tempered down with a little cream, and olive oil just blossoms out on the palate so you get a real big mouthful of flavor and then when you take a sip of the wine all of a sudden this cuts through and the wine takes over and as they start to intermingle now you get this great flavor sensation happening and you want to repeat it over and over and over again so the wonderful thing you're going to find with this wine is that it really works well with a lot of different kinds of food types 
and the food preparation that we're offering as a recipe also works with lots of different kinds of wines and they all create separate experiences. So don't be shy about trying it with different things in your own way and massaging it around and doing your own little thing with it. Uh, if you want more information, you can visit our website at ectimowines.com or you can call me directly at 707-827-3008. I'll be happy to talk to you. We might even cut you a deal. You never know. Hi, I'm Nova. I'm the winemaker at uh, Fopiano Vineyards in Healdsburg. I'm here with Jeremy, our tasting room manager. And we're going to talk a little bit about one of the wines we have offered for the Wine and Food Affair. It's our uh, 2016 Gianna's Block. Gianna is the sixth generation member of the Fopiano family, still family owned. For those of you who uh, are local, you've probably driven by the winery so many times you can't, you can't even count. It's uh, right off Old Redwood Highway, just south of Healdsburg. And believe it or not, it's one of the oldest family owned wineries in the entire state of California. And uh, that certainly makes it one of the oldest family owned wineries in uh, Sonoma County. So long heritage, started in 1896 and proudly been making uh, estate wines from that time all the way till now. So we'll try the uh, 2016 Giannis Block Petite Syrah now. Um, but while Nova's pouring it, uh, we have a, a recipe that we are pairing with this called uh, Tolka alla Genovese, which is basically a braised or uh, browned hunk of about a one pound hunk of chuck, browned on all sides, and then cooked down with uh, various aromatics, carrots, celery, onions, sage, garlic, rosemary, Italian parsley, um, red wine, and broth, and all cooked down to a reduction of um, over a period of about two to three hours. You toss it with some fresh pasta after that, save the meat for a different use, great for meatballs, um, and we thought it would pair very nicely uh, with the wine. Yeah. Jeremy was nice enough to experimentally produce the, the meal, and uh, you know, food and wine together, always a magical thing. And uh, it does pair very well. It's pasta based, but the, the sauce is so hearty. Uh, the aromatics of the wine, which are very much a dried sage, lavender, you know, blackberry, dried blackberry, kind of a, kind of a group of uh, aromas pair so well with the herbs that are in the dish. And then of course, a mouthful of those chewy noodles with that mouth filling, the big, palette of Petite Syrah is just really a pretty magical combination. Texturally, I love how rich this wine is, but the tannins are all balanced, well balanced together. Um, and I think a lot of that has to do with the old vines, um, but also maybe the, the barrel aging process. I don't know if you wanted to talk about that. This is, does come from Old Vine Petite Syrah. It's right uh, next door to the tasting room. Uh, you can sit on the tasting room deck and actually see the vines. And uh, you're getting, it's Petite Syrah, so it's going to be very dark, very structured. But it's a 2016, so it's had ample time to mellow its finish out. The tannins are very smooth. I think it's, uh, I, I know it's going to pair well, and I'm, I'm really proud how this wine's tasting. It's a delicious wine consistently one of our guest favorites. Um, if you're near near the winery, if you're in Healdsburg or Sonoma County, please come on by. We're open daily, uh, 11 to 5 till 6 on Fridays. Check out our website at uh, fopiano.com. That's F-O-P-P-I-A-N-O.com. Um, and you can uh, book appointments there or shop for the wines. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you. Hello, I'm Bill Frick. I started Frick Winery 44 years ago with my late wife, Judith Gannon. We didn't have a lot, but uh, we sold our 57 Chevy, just like this, same model, and that's what financed most of our winery. Now I, I produce mostly uh, all small batch Rhone wines, exclusively Rhone wines, 14 different wines altogether. I make all the wines myself. I have no employees. 
so it's, everything's hands-on at Frick. The, my most popular wine is Sanso, which I, is the featured wine today. And it also, it's also featured in my recipe. Sanso is a uh, Rhone grape variety. It has big berries, wonderful, juicy, luscious fruit, which transfers into the wines. This is my 2016. I bottle age my wines with a considerable amount of time. It pours out to be a beautiful purple color. The aromas are a fruit, cherry, raspberry, strawberry. Delicious. It has cherry, strawberry, a little bit of cranberry, strawberry fruit in the flavor, very round, soft tannins. It's a very approachable wine. I chose this wine for my recipe. The recipe has two main ingredients, chicken and sanso. The ingredients are simple. It's very easy to make. And the other thing about I that I do like, it takes one pot. It's a one pot meal. No, very little cleanup. And Sanso is the wine that I chose. Besides being very popular, it's got great fruit, really goes nicely with chicken. So there isn't anything more you'd want to stew a chicken in than Sanso. It takes about a half a bottle, and so you have another half a bottle to, to drink while you're cooking. Now you can check out more, more of my wines and more details at my website, Frick Winery. Also, for this weekend, I have a special. You, if you use the code WFA, you're going to go to the website and get 25% off on my Sanso. 2016. Thank you for listening to me and I hope you try my recipe. Hope to see you at the uh, winery someday. I do have tastings on weekends, Saturdays and Sundays by appointment. Have a great weekend. Hi guys, my name is Ross Reedy with VML Winery and I'm here to talk to you about the food and wine pairing we've created for you today. The food is a wild mushroom puff pastry with a pine nut aioli sauce. <laughs> and the wine we're going to be pairing with that is the 2017 um, VML Pinot Noir Earth Blend. Now, the um, recipe was created by a local chef. His name's Dan Lucia. He's out of Santa Rosa. DL Catering is his company and great chef, so be sure and check him out. Um, and the reason we created this pairing is, you know, it's, there's that classic mushroom and Pinot Noir pairing. And um, the reason it's a classic is because you do find a lot of the same characteristics and flavor profiles between the two. So in certain areas in the Russian River, particularly the western areas, you do get a lot of that earth and um, forest floor and kind of those mushroom characteristics that complements or goes exactly well with a mushroom based dish. The other part about this food pairing that works really well that I thought was actually super difficult was that it is a pretty heavy dish. If you look through the ingredients you'll see there is some garlic, there's some aioli sauce, um, there's the mushroom flavor is real robust so um, sometimes that can drown out Pinot Noir which is a problem but um, for our specific blend that we chose, it is our most robust style Pinot Noir. So it actually holds up to this dish super well. Um, and hopefully you guys will be able to see that. You can find the recipe um, online at the Food and Wine Affair website. But um, one of the highlights I had, I actually made this dish myself this morning. It was super fun. Um, the coolest part for me was figuring out the mushrooms. So in this particular dish, I chose 15 different types of wild mushrooms, most I hadn't even heard of before. Um, and if you're a forager, that's great. You can go out. I mean, it's not really the season right now. Go out and forage, but 
for someone like me who doesn't do that, uh, I just went to my local supermarket, went to the produce section, and chose literally every single mushroom I could find. So that part was super, super fun. It was kind of tasting things that I'd never had and seeing how it would pair with this particular wine. Um, but yeah, again, you can find the, the full recipe online and um, try and make it, and it's really fun to do. I just did it this morning. Um, and be sure and check out DL Catering. He's a great chef. And obviously, come on into VML Tasting Room and pick up some of this delicious 2017 Earth Pinot Noir. Thank you guys very much. We made it. That was fun. That was a lot of wineries and a lot of information. But I hope that you, you know, met some new people. And I hope that it was fun to see the people that you know and that you visited in the past. And at this point, we're just really, really looking forward to having you come back and visiting us in person along the wine road. In the meantime, Sip Sonoma.